Okay, so let's uh, let's continue with this uh, proof proof of the Riemann mapping theorem. Uh, so what we have is, see, we have uh, we have this family script F uh, consisting of analytic functions from the uh, given simply connected domain D, uh, which is not the whole complex plane. Okay, and uh, uh, taking values in the unit disc delta, all right. This is the unit disc centered at the origin, radius one, right? Open unit disc, such that, uh, <coughs> uh, of course, f is analytic, injective, uh, and uh, taking f of z not uh, to Taking z not to zero, so z not uh, so z not is a point of d, right? And so we have this family script f. Then what we did was <coughs> we uh, we had taken uh, so the 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 fact that uh, each f takes values in the unit disc that told you that uh, mod f is always strictly less than one for all f in the family. So this tells you that the family is uniformly bounded. Okay, so so script F is uniformly bounded. And of course, that uh, we've already seen that this family is non-empty. Okay, because uh, you can always find uh, uh, a a holomorphic isomorphism of D onto a subdomain of the unit disc. Okay, that was the first step of the Riemann mapping theorem that we started to prove. Okay, so this <coughs> this family is non-empty. Okay, and uh, 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 the family is uniformly bounded. All right, and therefore now you apply. Uh, so you what you do is you take uh, so Montel's theorem will apply to say that if you have any uh, if you take any sequence in this family. Then there will be a uniformly there will be a there will be a subsequence which will converge uniformly on uh, compact subsets. Na namely, you will always find a normally convergent subsequence. Normal convergence means uniform convergence on compact subsets. Okay, so Montel's theorem will apply. But to which sequence do we uh, uh, apply it to? So what we do is we look at uh, the you look at the supremum the the supremum of uh, the derivative of these. Uh, functions at z not the modulus of the derivative okay the fact that this is a finite is because of uh, 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 it is basically because of Cauchy's estimates okay therefore the supremum is a finite number we called it as a all right and uh, we proved that since uh, all the uh, this this a is of course uh, uh, non negative in fact uh, so uh, the fact that all these f's are all injective uh, means that all these derivatives can never vanish okay therefore a is a positive quantity all right and uh, uh, then what we did is we took uh, a sequence fn uh, in the family f uh, such that Uh, the if you take the corresponding sequence of derivatives and you take their moduli that converges to A and this is because A is uh, uh, the supremum it has a has a approximation property a, a supremum of a set of uh, real numbers can be gotten as the limit of a sequence from that set okay. So you that is how you get this sequence okay the sequence of functions in F such that their derivatives at z0 uh, the modulus of the derivatives at z0 tends to a okay 
and then by using Montel's theorem, Montel's theorem uh, tells you that uh, there, there exists a subsequence f n k uh, which converges normally to a function f naught okay. So, this is the application of Montel's theorem which says that whenever you have a uniformly bounded uh, family of analytic functions uh, then you take any sequence in that family the sequence will admit a subsequence which converges uh, normally okay. So, normally on D which means uniformly on compact subsets of T alright. Now what we did uh, then uh, then of course the the big deal was that uh, 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 that so then the claim was that uh, the the image uh, of uh, f naught under d uh, the image of d under f naught is actually the whole unit disk okay so this f naught succeeds in mapping uh, the given simply connected domain which is not the whole complex plane isomorphically onto the unit disk okay which is the main aim of the Riemann mapping theorem so uh, so the first thing is that uh, um, so there are a few there are a few facts that one has to understand the first thing is uh, as I told you uh, 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 first of all uh, if you uh, the f n k of z naught in modulus the derivatives tends to a that will tell you that f naught derivative of f naught at z naught is also a uh, the modulus of that is also a okay because f n k tends to f naught because it is normal convergence the derivatives will also tend to the derivative of f naught and if you apply z naught and take modulus you will get this fact. So this this limit function okay uh, mind you uh, a normal limit of analytic functions is analytic therefore this f naught is certainly analytic alright and its derivative at z naught if you take the modulus that will be a alright that is because of uh, this convergence and the definition of a okay and the sub and the sequence we have picked and uh, and this de so the derivative is uh, at z naught uh, is certainly uh, the derivative at z naught for the function f naught is non zero so it is a non constant function so f naught uh, is not con is non constant okay because had it been constant the derivative would be 0 alright everywhere so it is a non constant function but then uh, 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 you now apply Hurwitz's theorem which tells you that whenever you have a sequence of injective analytic functions that converges normally to a function then the limit function is either constant or it is also injective but since the limit function is not constant Hurwitz's theorem will tell you that f naught is also injective. if not is also injective <coughs> that is 1 to 1 or univalent in other words okay. So that is because of Hurwitz's theorem then the other thing is <coughs> that uh, you know uh, since uh, uh, since mod f is always uh, less than 1 for all f in script f uh, so that will tell you that you know of course uh, these f the subsequence is also from there. So, mod f n k is always less than 1. So, so that will tell you that uh, mod f will also be less than 1 okay. So, uh, here <coughs> uh, I mean mod f naught will also be less than 1 okay and why why is this true because you know of course uh, 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 if all these functions are bounded by 1 therefore the limit function will also be bounded by 1 okay but I want to say it is strictly bounded by 1 I, I want to say the limit function cannot take uh, the modulus of the limit function cannot be equal to 1 and why is that true because if it is equal to 1 that means there is some point in D uh, where, where f naught uh, takes a value which lies on the unit circle okay but then uh, there is this open mapping theorem which tells you that a non constant analytic function always the image of uh, any open set 
if the image under any op the, the image of any open set under any non constant analytic function is an open set that means uh, what is another way to say it the other way to say it is that an analytic the values that an analytic function takes they are all interior values the analytic function cannot take a boundary value see what is open mapping theorem say it says you take you you apply uh, you take an open set and apply the analytic function you get an image set that image set is open that means each of the values it takes is surrounded by a disk full of which are consisting of the values of the function so it cannot take a boundary value so you you can also think of the open mapping theorem as saying that an analytic function cannot take a boundary value so you, this f0 cannot take the boundary value one because you know if it takes the boundary value one okay then it will also take values outside a, a little outside the unit disk okay it will if it takes the boundary value one okay if it takes a value on the unit circle okay the bound which is the boundary of the unit disk then in a then it will also take all values in a neighborhood surrounding that point on the unit circle and that neighborhood will say part of that neighborhood will be outside the unit disk okay and therefore it will take some values outside the unit disk okay so there you will get points you will get points in d where the function uh, limit function f capital f not is taking values uh, outside the unit disk but it is a limit of functions all of which are taking values only inside the unit disk and that will give you a contradiction okay a limit of a sequence of uh, values uh, which lie in the unit disk cannot converge to a value which is outside the unit disk okay so that contradiction will tell you that uh, uh, f0 also is strictly bounded by one in modulus okay and so uh, use uh, by op by the open mapping theorem and so and what so so the moral of the story and of course you know uh, if you take uh, uh, fnk of z0 is 0 by definition and but this tends to f0 of z0 which will tell you that f0 of z0 is also 0 so all these observations tell you that this f0 is actually an element of the family script f so f0 is an injective analytic function from the given simply connected domain d which is not the whole complex plane taking values in the unit disk and taking z0 to 0 okay so f0 so in other words you see you have you have uh, for all you have this supremum a the supremum a is attained by a function that function is also in this family <coughs> that is what we have proved okay the, the supremum a is attained by a function which is also in the same family all right on which the supremum is defined right so this f0 is in f so this is a fact that we need okay uh, that is an observation that we need to make then now comes uh, now I will have to tell you that you know uh, uh, f0 takes uh, d on to the unit disk so I mean the moment I say this it means that you know you know f0 is already injective so it is an inject and you know an injective holomorphic or analytic map is an isomorphism onto its image therefore this once you prove this you have already proved that f0 is an isomorphism of d onto the unit disk okay which is the purpose of the Riemann mapping theorem all right so now you know uh, so the fact that f0 uh, the image of f0 fills out the whole unit disk that is a fact which uh, requires the use of hyperbolic geometry okay which is what we are going to look at so what I am going to do is uh, so what I am going to do is I am going to break off at this point and say a few things okay so the first thing I want to say is that you know uh, uh, so we we we, we go to uh, we change our focus for a little uh, for a little amount of time and look at go back to hyperbolic geometry okay so the first thing I want to say is so here is a so here is a, a remark so the remark is uh, you know that uh, uh, if you take a point uh, uh, if you take two points in the unit disk so I, I think I maybe I should not use z0 because z0 is already used let me use something else uh, mm, theta0 and theta1 okay what is rho sub h rho sub h is a hyperbolic distance the hyper this distance 
between these two points in the unit disc for the hyperbolic metric okay and you know that is the arc length of the arc joining these two points on the circle passing through these two points and orthogonal to the unit circle okay because that is the geodesic for the hyperbolic geometry the path of shortest length okay and of course if one of these points lies uh, if one of these points uh, is the origin or if both of them lie on a diameter then that geodesic turns out to be just a, a straight line segment okay and otherwise it is not a straight line it is always a curved path it will be an arc of a circle which is which passes through these two points and which is perpendicular to the unit circle which is the boundary of the open unit disc right. Now what is the formula for this the formula for this is you see you know uh, 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 you know given any two points uh, uh, in the unit disc you know you can always find a, a Mobius transformation an automorphism of the unit disc that maps one of them to 0 and maps the other one onto uh, uh, um, if you want a point on the real axis okay you can always do that okay. So you know uh, so you know situations like this I have so this is my this is my uh, unit disc and you know I have two points A z naught I mean zeta naught and let us say zeta 1 okay uh, then you know I can write this Mobius transformation uh, if you want uh, let me give it a name capital H okay and you know I can find a Mobius transformation which uh, which will map uh, the unit disc to back to the unit disc that is it will be autom an automorphism of the unit disc and it will map uh, uh, the point zeta naught to 0. I can make zeta naught go to 0 and I can make zeta 1 go to a point on the real axis I can do that okay this can always be done how because you know you, you have to just define h of z h of zeta to be you know if you put zeta minus zeta naught by 1 minus zeta naught bar zeta okay this will map zeta naught to 0 and this is certainly of the form of the general form of an automorphism of the unit disc okay and then the only thing is when I put zeta 1 I will get h zeta 1 is zeta 1 minus zeta naught by 1 minus zeta naught bar zeta 1 that may not that is a point in the unit disc it may not lie on the uh, positive real axis but you know if I whatever its argument is if I multiply by uh, 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 you know e power i beta okay so that beta is the negative of the argument of this when I substitute zeta equal to zeta 1 then uh, h of zeta 1 will lie on the real axis. So you know so so this is something that this is an adjustment we can always do so what we will end up with is uh, I think this so you know uh, h of zeta is equal to e power i beta beta times this you put this okay uh, if you multiply by e power i beta it is still an automorphism of unit disc because e power i beta is just rotation about the origin okay uh, and uh, and you know general automorphism of unit disc looks like this that is also something that we have seen already okay Wh where you put beta to be negative or principal argument of uh, you substitute zeta 1 without the e power i beta term. Okay. So now if you calculate h of uh, h of zeta 1 and you calculate the argument of h of zeta 1 argument of h of zeta 1 will be argument of beta I mean argument of e power i beta which is beta plus this okay so you will get 0. So the fact that its principal argument is 0 tells you that it is on the real axis so it is a positive real number uh, it is a fraction and it is inside the unit disc so it is a fraction. So you can do this now but what is the you know what is the advantage of doing this see the advantage of doing this is you know that the hyperbolic uh, uh, you know the you know that the automorphisms of the unit disc are isometries for the hyperbolic metric every the uh, for the distance given by the hyperbolic metric the every automorphism unit disc is a is an isometry okay. Uh, in fact uh, in a way 
the you know the original version I mean the Pick's lemma for example says that uh, that you know uh, if if you have an analytic function which maps unit disk into the unit disk if it is not an automorphism then it will be a strict contraction in terms of the hyperbolic metric otherwise it will be it will preserve the hyperbolic metric and it will be an automorphism ok. So, in this case this h is an automorphism so it will preserve the hyperbolic metric so this is the same as hyperbolic distance between h of zeta naught and h of zeta 1 and uh, this is just uh, the hyperbolic distance between 0 because h zeta naught is 0 and h zeta 1 is uh, uh, so h zeta 1 is whatever it is of course it is a real number ok and you know we derived a formula for this is this is half ln of uh, half ln of uh, 1 minus uh, uh, h zeta 1 uh, by 1 plus h zeta I mean 1 plus h zeta 1 by 1 minus h zeta ok. So, uh, so this is the formula for the hyperbolic distance between any 2 points in the unit disk because this is something we already calculated if if you had a real number r here ok where r is a fraction you will get half ln 1 plus r by 1 minus r right that is just the radial distance uh, from the point from the origin to the point with uh, point lying on the real axis with coordinate r ok. So, this is a calculation we have already done I need you to remember this then so take g from delta to delta analytic uh, uh, not not uh, not an is not an isomorphism ok. Take a function take an analytic map from the unit disk to the unit disk which is not an isomorphism alright take such a map. Now what this will tell you is that you know uh, I mean what does Pick's lemma tell you? Pick's lemma tells you that G is a strict contraction G is a strict contraction with respect to the hyperbolic metric ok. So, that is what Pick's lemma tells you alright. What does that mean? It means that if you take uh, if you take uh, 2 points z zeta naught and zeta 1 in the unit disk ok you apply the points to G you take their that is you take their images under G and you apply you calculate the hyperbolic distance ok. The distance between the image points will be strictly less than the distance between the original points. So, uh, it will be strictly less than the hyperbolic distance between the original points. So, this will happen this is uh, this is Pick's lemma that uh, any analytic map or self map of the unit disk which is not a isomorphism which is not an automorphism it has to contract ok. You take 2 points and then you take their images the distance between the images under the hyperbolic metric is smaller than strictly smaller than the original distance distance between the original points under, under the hyperbolic metric ok. If you know if zeta naught is fixed and zeta 1 tends to zeta naught ok what what will happen you see as zeta 1 as the points come closer and closer the obviously the distance between the 2 points will come closer and closer and it will tend to 0. So, what will happen is that the distance the hyperbolic distance between zeta naught and zeta 1 that tends to 0 ok and as zeta 1 tends to zeta naught g zeta 1 will also tend to g zeta naught because of continuity of g ok. g zeta 1 tends to g zeta naught it will imply that the hyperbolic distance between g zeta naught and g zeta 1 will also tend to 0 ok. So, I am just stating the obvious thing that as the points come closer their images also come closer ok and both sides will tend to 0 ok. See if two quantities go to 0 ok it is not necessary that uh, 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 their ratio goes to 0 ok. It can happen that the ratio can go to infinity or it can go to 0 or it can go to some finite value. So, these two go to 0 
but the fact is that if you take the ratio rho uh, if you take the ratio of the uh, distance between the images uh, and the distance between uh, the two given points okay this quantity can be approximated by the following uh, uh, number uh, 2 r by 1 plus r squared okay uh, where uh, zeta naught zeta 1 uh, belong to uh, mod z less than or equal to small r which is strictly less than. So, in fact I want to say in fact I do not even want to say this I want to say that this is always less than or equal to okay this is a bounded quantity and this is the bound okay and this bound is uh, uh, and in fact this bound is even attained okay uh, and the the bound is attained. the bound is attained. So, there are uh, you can find points zeta naught and zeta 1 uh, in this disc for which uh, the ratio of the distance is exactly equal to this. So, that bound is also attained. So, for so this is very important this is not for any g this is for g zeta is equal to zeta square this is for this this is for the square function okay. So, I mean if g is any analytic self map of from the unit disc to the unit disc which is not an isomorphism it is a contraction okay and the point about both sides is both sides goes to go to 0 as the points approach each other okay. But if you take the ratio the ratio is a 0 by 0 form okay and a 0 by 0 form can behave in any way that you want but it will go to 0 because the numerator is strictly lesser than the denominator alright this is strictly less than this okay. So, you can expect it to go to 0 alright, but then you can get a very special expression for what this ratio is uh, for z z zeta 1 very close to zeta naught okay and in fact if you take both zeta naught and zeta 1 in this closed disc okay then this is bounded by this number 2 r by 1 plus r square where uh, th and that is for the particular case of the function g which is zeta square okay the square function the square function is of course an analytic map from the unit disc to the unit disc, uh, but you know it is not uh, it is not uh, it is not an isomorphism because it is not injective because you have 2 square roots going to the same uh, it is 2 to 1 in, in a deleted I mean in the deleted disc I mean from the disc if you remove the origin then uh, both uh, z and minus z will go to the same value. So, it is a 2 to 1 map alright. So, this is not an injective map so it is not a holomorphic isomorphism therefore by pick's lemma it will be a contraction but the point is when you calculate this ratio for zeta 1 and zeta naught inside this closed disc this is the bound for this ratio okay but the question is how do you get this number okay for that you know you you have these points zeta naught and zeta 1 you can move you can move zeta naught to the origin you move zeta 1 to this r by using a map h like this okay and then you calculate uh, now you calculate this ratio you calculate this ratio this ratio will be rho h of uh, 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 you know uh, this ratio it will be rho h of 0 r squared divided by rho h of uh, uh, 0 r okay. I am calculating it for uh, I am simply calculating it for the for the uh, 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 for these two points and their uh, the effect of uh, uh, the function e, uh, zeta going to zeta squared for those two points okay instead of calculating it for two general points zeta 1 and zeta naught because I can move them to these two points alright. So, you know for example if you do this calculation okay you will get uh, you will get half ln uh, you will get half ln of uh, 1 plus r squared by 1 minus r squared by half ln of 1 plus r by 1 minus r okay this is what it will be alright and then you know if you try to apply if you try to study it as r tends to 0 okay this is a you know as r 
as r tends to 0 this is ln this is ln 1 which is a 0 by 0 form. So, you can apply L'Hopital's rule ok. So, applying L'Hopital's rule will tell you that you can differentiate both the numerator and the denominator ok. It is a 0 by 0 form if you take limit as r tends to 1 I mean r tends to uh, 0 ok. It is a uh, it is an infinitesimal I mean it is a 0 by 0 indeterminate form. So, if you apply L'Hopital's rule this can be what you will get is you know if you calculate it you will get 2 r by 1 plus r square. Just apply L'Hopital's rule uh, for uh, r very very small you will get this ok and that is very simple you just differentiate the numerator and then you differentiate the denominator and divide you will get this expression ok. So, uh, so the moral of the story is that I need to know how this uh, quantity looks like uh, you know when uh, the point zeta 1 comes very close to the point zeta naught I need that fact right. And, uh, and in particular uh, of course you know you must remember that this is this is less than 1 this is certainly less than 1 because if you cross multiply and move things to the other side I will get 1 minus r the whole square which is uh, strictly greater than 0 right. So, so this I mean the fact that this is less than 1 is the statement that I mean it again uh, reinforces the fact that it is a contraction so strict contraction alright. Now anyway uh, actually uh, probably even this expression is not so important for me I want I want to say that there is a there is a there is a constant ok uh, this ratio is less than or equal to a constant which is less than 1 ok I need that fact for the square function right. Now, now what you do is you now we do uh, this uh, uh, this very nice lemma. So, here is a lemma which is kind of one should not call it a lemma in fact it is a it is more than a theorem because it uses lot of stuff ok and which is uh, it is a critical lemma that we need to complete the proof of the Riemann mapping theorem. So, the lemma is the following the lemma is if uh, uh, if uh, uh, let me use uh, um, d naught in delta is a simply connected domain domain uh, such that d naught is not equal to the whole unit disc suppose you have a simply connected domain uh, in the unit disc which is not the whole unit disc ok and if 0 is a point of d naught then there exists uh, and uh, there exists an uh, an analytic map uh, or holomorphic map psi from uh, d naught to delta such that psi takes 0 to 0 and the derivative of psi at the origin as modulus greater than 1. So, this is a this is a rather technical lemma ok it is a rather technical lemma which uses hyperbolic geometry, but this is what we need for uh, completing the proof of the Riemann mapping theorem. So, what this tells is you see the situation is like this the situation is I have I have this uh, I have this unit disc I will draw a bigger one so that I can fill in with other things. So, and I have I have a domain uh, I have domain d naught which is not equal to the whole unit disc ok and such that it contains the point it contains the origin ok. Then what this lemma says is that I can find uh, you know a holomorphic map that maps d naught again into another uh, uh, domain 
in the unit disc ok such that 0 will go to 0 alright, but the derivative at this at 0 can be made greater than 1 ok. So, this is like you know you see the, the point I want you I mean the way I want you to think about it is like this see what is go back to our Schwartz lemma ok go back to Schwartz lemma go back to actually infinitesimal version of Schwartz lemma what does it say from if you are having an analytic map from the unit disc to the unit disc ok then the derivative at the origin in modulus has to be bounded above by 1 the derivative at the origin cannot exceed 1 it has to be less than or equal to 1 and it will be equal to 1 exactly when it is an automorphism if it is strictly less than 1 it is certainly not an automorphism ok. Now that that uh, that lemma has this is like you know uh, the effect of uh, statements similar to that lemma not for maps from the unit disc to the unit disc, but for maps from a smaller simply connected subdomain of the unit disc to the unit disc. So, what that lemma says is that if your map is from the unit disc to the unit disc then the derivative at the origin modulus is bounded above by 1, but if you try to map a smaller domain a smaller simply connected domain to the unit disc by an analytic map ok you can always succeed in exceeding uh, the you can always succeed in succeed in exceeding that bound for the derivative at the origin ok see this will not happen if d naught is equal to delta if d naught is equal to delta then Schwarz lemma the infinitesimal version of Schwarz lemma will tell you that the derivative is less than or equal to 1 and in fact if it is not an automorphism it will be strictly less than 1 you can never exceed 1 and you will get 1 only when it is an automorphism ok. But the moment you have smaller simply connected domain you can manage to find a analytic map which whose derivative at the origin modulus is greater than 1 this is like you know uh, this is this tells you what you can uh, this tells you about analytic maps from a simply connected proper subdomain of the unit disc to the unit disc it also uh, always tells you that you can get you can always find one thing that uh, that you know uh, that is opposite to what you will get for the Schwarz lemma uh, had d not been the whole unit disc right. So, you should see it in that uh, you should see it in that point of view ok.